Welcome back, folks. What is happening? Today, another episode of Ocean Aquatics TV, we're gonna debunk the theory about cichlids. Today, we're gonna be diving in depth. What is the difference between Mabuna, Peacock, what's a hap? We're gonna talk about it all today. Join us, let's get into it. Like I mentioned in the little intro, today we're gonna to be going in depth here in our Rift Lake Aquarium. And there's a couple of others in here you'll see that aren't from that region, but we're gonna divulge little information and tidbits about mixing certain species together, especially with different dietary requirements and needs. The differences between Mabuna, peacocks, or haps, and which ones are perfect for you and how do you mix them together if they have different dietary needs. First off, we're gonna start with what is a Mabuna and a Peacock and how do you tell the difference? You can see that we have a couple of Mabunas in the sink. There's actually only two. We have this nice albino to the Atrophus sacalophi. They call it the Snow White Cichlid. And then there's also one of Scott's absolute favorite fish, the Labradochromis. Uh, the yellow labs, another great Mabuna species that actually mixes really well with larger peacocks and predator haps. And you may be asking like, well, I heard that if you have a Mabuna tank to stick with a Mabuna tank, and if you have a peacock tank to stick with a peacock and hap tank, and in some sense that can be true because it can be sometimes tricky to meet the dietary requirements of these specific fish. For those of you that don't know, today you're finding out Mabunas are 100% strictly herbivoric, and they most of the time are grazing on different algaes that grow on the stones in Lake Malawi. Mabuna, the term is derivative of rock dweller in Africa, uh, so they will actually make caves and dig through holes and kind of live throughout the rocky substrates of Lake Malawi. These fish can be pretty aggressive, and that's where the whole myth of, oh, if you have a Mabuna tank, you can't put them with peacocks, and that's where that stems from, because some of these varieties can be quite aggressive, and they can be territorial over their rockscape. Now, a lot of these uh, peacocks and haps are open water swimmers, so they do a lot up in the, the middle to top level of the water column. You don't really see them much come down to the sandy substrate unless they're looking to coax a female into breeding. And that's how we're able to kind of separate them in a sense and give them different parts in the aquarium where they're able to get along. You know, giving the peacocks their own territory and giving the mabunas their own territory. And we're picking species that are less aggressive, that aren't as territorial. Yellow labs are probably the number one type of mabuna that we like to mix in with the peacocks because of their a tendency to be less aggressive. Same thing with the albino sacalophis. We'll also do fish like the Sudetrophus to Masoni, another really good fish that's gonna keep to himself and hang out in the crevices of the stones and in the rocks and kind of keep to themselves, so especially if you get a group of them in there. Sometimes with those certain species, if you really like a specific one, say red top hongis or the Demasoni, or say you really like yellow labs, it's really good to actually have one specific type I and mean, keep it segregated to that because they will mingle with each other more and stay away from the peacocks. There's no need for them to kind of pick on them. I guess I just explained to you the main difference between peacocks and Mabuna is Mabuna are vegetarians. They like algae and they should not really be fed a very heavy meat diet. Although they will enjoy it, you have to be careful because they can get the famous Malawi bloat. Um, and there's ways to cure that and we can help you out with that. We can go in depth in another video. But Mabuna should be on a very heavy veggie based diet, a spirulina or wheat germ based diet with occasional supplementation of like maybe some brine spirulina or a mysis shrimp or uh, maybe a pellet that has a little bit more of a heavy protein, especially when they're juveniles, they can handle that. Cause you gotta make sure that your haps and your peacocks, if you're gonna be mixing them together are getting the protein content that they need. Peacocks, like we're getting into now, obviously have a different dietary supplement need than Mabuna. Now, most peacocks in adult form and haps are, especially haps, the bigger predator haps, are piscivores. They're mainly foraging on smaller fish throughout the lake. They will opportunistically eat plants and other de decaying plant matter. Peacocks are actually born in juveniles. They gotta grow and they gotta get fast. They're actually born predators. And they mainly eat meat as they're growing up. So a higher protein pellet, if you're gonna be breeding some of these, is actually important. Now, I would like to implement a little bit there because a lot of times we'll tell people to stay away from meat with peacocks and haps and just in the cichlid tank in general, especially if you're gonna be mixing them. Doing a heavier veggie-based pellet diet is okay. It usually has a high enough protein content that everybody is gonna get what they need and be able to grow and sustain and get large. 
especially if you already have uh, and you're purchasing adults. Um, it's easier for them to bloat if you're doing a very heavy protein and meat diet, and it keeps them abunas, and if you're gonna mix in certain Tanganyikan species like we have in here, there is a Trophius, which is another one that is strictly herbivoric. So keeping your pelleted diet is strictly based on an African cichlid pellet that is based on spirulina and wheat germ is ideal when you're gonna be mixing these species together. Now you're gonna implement and throw in different types of frozen foods here and there, bigger pieces, uh, maybe uh, slices of fish or squid or things like that for the larger fish that they're getting their protein. The whole intended purpose of this video is to help you guys better understand the differences when you're coming in the store to pick out your aquarium fish, the differences between the peacock mabuna and hap. So I really wanna dive into now exactly like how to tell the difference. And we're gonna overlay a bunch of pictures as well again. Basically, the structure and shape of most mabunas are very similar. They stay a little smaller for one. Most of the time you're gonna see them smaller in the store. They tend to have more of like a, a slender body. Like it's not as tall as what most peacocks and haps are. And then they have what we call this rounded or almost like bulldog type face. And uh, we'll put up a picture there kind of implementing and showing you their, their mouth and their head is designed to be closer for them to rip and tear algae on surfaces in the rock structures and shapes in the aquaria or in the wild. And now peacocks and haps, most of the predator haps typically tend to be a little bit more streamlined. They usually have a taller body, but overall their length is longer and they tend to be almost more hydrodynamic in a sense. You wouldn't make a ship in the shape of a mabuna's face, you know? Peacocks are intended to, to have good open water swimming capabilities, and mabunas are, like I said, good at eating algae and digging through crevices and rocks, and they use their face and everything to push sand around. The haps are open water swimmers, and they prey upon, and they're piscivores, and they prey upon little juvenile fish and insects and whatnot. And that's really the main difference between those two types. Peacocks now, kind of all look the same in a sense. A little bit different than the body shape of a hap and you can usually tell the difference. The more you understand and you, you look and you watch and you look at pictures and, and look, just look at the fish, it kind of comes with experience. There's really not a good way to like divulge this. Again, peacocks also have more of a pointed snout, like it, it doesn't come to a rounded end. Um, so both peacocks and haps are looking at that pointed face, basically designed to sneak up and eat at, at, at fish and catch them in the water column. And they're designed to be able to swim faster because they are open water swimmers. We're over by the uh, African for sale tanks now, and we've actually recently almost completely have split apart the main differences in the peacocks versus mabunas for you guys. So you can come into the store and kind of uh, already know like, okay, all of these are mabunas, so it makes it easier picking out. There's a couple of random oddballs and different things that'll mix well with them in the mabuna tank. And then in the front tank over here, we have all the peacocks and larger predator haps, et cetera. And then our peninsula, is also all peacocks, larger predator haps, uh, tank you can fish, etc. These two foods here, it's actually a new one we've started carrying, and so far they've been my favorite, personally, with the ingredient list and how the fish react with them. The Algae Max from New Life Spectrum and the Insectrum from New Life Spectrum are two great foods that you can actually mix together to kind of target both dietary needs of the peacocks and the mabunas and the haps if you're mixing them together. Uh, the Algae Max is great. It's 34% protein, algae-based food, um, entirely uh, based off of seaweed, spirulina. There's a little bit of krill, a little bit of squid too. Um, and what, this is, is, is ideal for your trophies, your mabuna, et cetera. It's, it's entirely based off of a, a veggie diet, but there are some other meat proteins in there that are okay that they can process because it's in a pelleted food and it's in a smaller amount. And then on the other hand, the Insectrum here, lots of different insects that they would be preying upon in the surface of the water if they're in an area like that. And as well as other types of fish and algaes as well. There's a ton of seaweeds, uh, forgive me. Taras would be very upset that they don't know how to pronounce any of these, but there's like eight of them. <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to get at with these two different types of food, if you have something that's either insect-based or fish-based for the piscivores, um, as long as there's some amount of veggie-based diet, you're typically safe, especially most of the captive raised mabunas. Trophies is a little bit different story. You're gonna target a little bit heavier on like an algae-based pellet, but doing something like this, a prepared food, especially a sinking pellet, you don't want a floating pellet. Sinking pellets, or at least semi-sinking, something that's a very dense pellet, um, is easier for the fish to process and digest and it's not gonna swell or bloat in their stomach and that is usually the number one thing that causes issues with especially um, fish like Mabuna or Trophius. Um, and we're gonna go give some of the Algae Max over here to these guys. 
the Mabunas here and the Peacocks, and actually really all the Cichlids kind of as uh, throughout the day, multiple times a day um, in smaller amounts. So they're all able to kind of get a little bit here and there and kind of graze like they naturally would in the wild. Um, it's better than just giving them one whole meal. So if you have a cichlid tank and you figured out how much they're gonna feed, if you didn't check out our other video, we show you how to prevent overfeeding. Danny can link it in the YouTube card or in the description below. Or if you're on Facebook, just get off and go to YouTube. <laughs> if you have Mabuna feeding heavier on the uh, algae side, you will have success. Get a big tank, get a nice rock work going, and you're gonna enjoy your yellow labs, your Demace and I, your red top hongis, or your white sock lawfies, with your beautiful OB peacocks, Fuscosomus, your Venustus, is everybody's popular favorite one, your Livingstonies, your big dolphins. Feed a varied diet, that's the key. Don't just feed one or two types of pellets. Get some other frozen foods here and there as treats like Hakari Seaweed Extreme, lots of seaweed. Nori Sheets, Hakari Cichlid XL, another one that we use a ton here. Great for the uh, peacocks, Mabunas, Trophius, a veggie-based wheat germ and spirulina pellet. Maybe even try the OSA Color and Limited Bites. Really small ingredient list and really quality ingredient list. Krill, black soldier fly larva, kelp, fish meal, hemiocatochias pulvoldus algae, I think I pronounced that right, spirulina and fish oil and garlic. Super good. Can't be the only thing you feed, but if you want a little bit of uh, color in the fish, it's got a ton of krill and astaxanthin. Make the colors pop. So basically, what I'm, what I'm getting at is feed your fish a prairie diet. That's all. I hope we gave you a little bit more insight on the different shapes and sizes of Mabuna uh, versus Peacock. Peacocks, in general, most of the time in the aquarium hobby, you're gonna see brightly colored OBs or large single color, in colors like blues, yellows, reds, pinks, like the fire red uh, or the dragon bloods here we have, the OBs, all the blotching. To clarify, OB, for those that don't know, stands for orange blotched. Most OBs have some type of orangey blotching with blues and reds and yellows. So those are the main kind of color varieties you're gonna see in most peacocks. Haps typically are what we still know today as wild in a sense. They, they are a color that actually exists normally. A lot of these OB and hybrid colors are aquarium raised. And then Mabuna as well, kind of the same thing. There's, there's a few different hybrid Mabunas and there's Harakwin OB Mabunas, which are really cool. But most Mabunas, you're looking at a solid color. Like I said, that rounded head shape, a little bit stockier. Or you're getting dark vertical bands or horizontal bands, whether it's black and blue or black and white or solid colors, um, some like purples, uh, oranges, yellows, kind of basically like that. And the cool thing about most Babuna species, especially in the Pseudiotrophus, Ideotrophius, and Labidochromus families, uh, uh, or species I should say, both males and females usually have great color, unlike peacocks and haps. So that's another cool thing, and why most people will probably lean towards Mabuna, because it don't matter if they're male or female yellow labs, they're both gonna be bright and yellow, which is really great. What you can and cannot mix together is something probably for another in-depth video or you can come into the store and we can talk about it more, what species work well. Basically, don't do it if you have a small tank. It's gonna be very hard to kind of implement the dietary needs and they're gonna, Mabunas will get aggressive. If you have a very large tank, something of 150 gallons or larger, it is definitely okay and safe to mix certain species of Mabunas. Hence the thumbnail of this title, The Truth About Cichlids. Some you can, some you can't. You have to play personalities a little bit and kind of target different dietary needs with certain sinking pellets, floating pellets, etc. If you wanna go more in depth about talking about how to actually properly care for the different dietary needs and species in the aquaria, come on in to one of our locations, whether it's Seacon, Coventry, or Wakefield, and talk to one of our specialists about the fish today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And as always, folks, keep it fresh, baby. Thank you.